Hello everyone, Steven here. Thank you so much for coming out to the studio today. So excited to have you here. In this episode, we're gonna do something really fun. I'm gonna take an old canvas that I had previously painted something on, but never finished it. And we're gonna paint completely over the top of it, a new painting using acrylics. So let's jump right into it. Here you see the sketch that I did just to give me something to go off of. And now I'm going to take the old painting and I'm toning it with some, I, I believe it was raw sienna acrylic paint. Just toning the canvas now and it dries pretty quick so I can get right into putting the sketch directly onto the canvas. And that's what I'm doing now. You notice that in my right hand I have my paintbrush and in my left hand I have my sketch. Just so that I can look at it and make sure that I get it onto the canvas. And now I am painting the background and working my way forward. And this canvas that I had was basically just a leftover from a painting class that I did. I got uh, to use it as a little bit of an example for some of my students, but I never finished it and I had it lying around the studio, so I just decided I don't want to waste this, I want to paint over it. And that's what inspired this video, is just to show that if you have paintings just lying around that are unfinished um, and you don't know what to do with them, you can definitely paint over the top of them. You can see I'm putting in the uh, next hill which is going to be a lot darker and right now we're just working on doing the block in and so we're not thinking about detail we're not going to get bogged down with doing a lot of detail we're just going to put the basic shapes and colors on and our next layer which is the modeling stage is going to go on top of that. And these are the two brushes that I used to complete the block in. There you can see the block in. And we're moving on to the modeling stage now. At this point, I'm starting to add in some more of those trees that are farther back. Even another hill in there. And I am making them just a tone of paint that's slightly darker than the one it's going on top of and that really creates a sense of depth and also adds a little bit of a misty effect which I want for this forest painting and we're just gonna go ahead and start the modeling which basically just includes a little bit more shaping and shading and highlighting and a little bit more adding of detail to inform the next and final stage, which is the detail stage, which, which when we do that near the end, we'll just really bring everything together.
Hey guys, just want to jump in really quick here and remind you to check out my website where I have a lot of these paintings for sale in canvas prints, also have photography prints as well, and also some originals that you can purchase as well. So be sure to check it out. It is windows to have an art.etsy.com. Again, that's windows to have an art.etsy.com. Enjoy the rest of the painting. Here you see I am actually covering over that part of the painting. I just didn't like it so I put some dark green paint over the top of it to blend it into the background. And this is the finished modeling stage. So now we're moving into the detail stage which is when the painting covers a lot of ground really quick. And you can see I'm using that shadowy part of the painting to overlay bright highlighted branches where you can imagine direct sunlight is hitting it just to create a nice contrast and I'm helping that look by putting in some sun rays as well that are filtering through and that's really easy to do it's kind of like putting mist on by dry brushing but you just put it in beams
here, I'm taking out that branch because I just thought it was too much. So I'm painting over the top of it with some green paint. But I really liked the color that it added to the painting, so I'm gonna take kind of that same color and put on some flowers onto the ground there. done with the painting, I think I can truly say that the biggest thing that I learned is to really plan it out a little bit more before you jump right into it. That would, I've said this before, it saves a lot of time when you do that because you notice with this painting I did a lot of changes last minute. Um, that's because I did stuff just kind of to try it out to see if I liked it and then I would you know, take a break from it and just look at it for a little while. And then I'd be like, no, I don't like that. That's not working for me. So I would change it. You can really avoid a lot of that, which is time consuming by planning it out beforehand. So that's really important. I've said that before. It's just this painting proves that even more. It's really good to plan it out beforehand. I know people, artists who will actually paint the entire thing on Photoshop before they actually, you know, paint it on the canvas. It seems like it would be more laborious to do it that way, but it really saves a lot of time. Other thing is I really needed to center the focal point of the canvas because there was so much going on with so much detail kind of everywhere that your eye didn't know where to go. And that's a problem because you want your eye to be drawn in kind of to the focal point and then everything else complements the focal point. So that's a big thing too. Thank you guys so much for coming out and joining me today. It was really fun. Until next time, God bless you guys.